Hello, my name is Jeff Hochberg, and I'm a solutions engineer at BitGlass. Thank you for joining me today as we set out to configure Okta as an external identity provider. Brief review of the agenda. First, we'll configure an API token using the Okta admin console. Next, we'll use the Okta application template to define the settings for BitGlass. Moving along, we'll mirror the setup in BitGlass by creating an external identity provider that points to Okta. We'll then map the newly created external identity provider to a BitGlass email domain. Before demonstrating how everything looks when it's all put together, since the authentication process is pretty fast, we'll take a few minutes to review things step by step. Then we'll log into Office 365 using the joint BitGlass and Okta solution and give a quick demonstration of some of the features of BitGlass data protection. There are a few things that were configured ahead of time that are of notable mention. To eliminate the need to configure user accounts in BitGlass, Okta, and Office 365, I installed and configured synchronization agents for each. I also added Office 365 as an application in both BitGlass and in Okta. And lastly, I used PowerShell to configure my Office 365 tenant to point to BitGlass for SAML authentication. In the event that anyone is following along with the video and notices discrepancies between the BitGlass domain names used in this video compared with in their environment, I just want to point out that any URLs ending in .us, .bitglass, .net are in the BitGlass trial environment, whereas any URLs ending in .bitglass.com or .btglss.net are in the production environment. Please keep that in mind as we proceed. In the first step, we'll use the Okta Admin Console to generate an API token. All the demos I'm doing are using the classic UI flavor of the Okta Admin Console, and can change that by choosing the drop-down select and choosing classic UI. We'll kick things off by going to Security, then API, and then we'll go to the Tokens tab. We'll click on Create Token, and we'll use a really catchy name like BitGlass API Token, and then click on Create Token. And then we'll click this button here and paste the value into a notepad document. And then we'll save this and we'll give it a name and store it somewhere since we'll need it a little bit later on in the process. Now that we've created the API token, let's move on to defining the settings for BitGlass using the Okta custom application template. Using the custom application template allows us to easily view the configuration settings for future reference. Okta does have a BitGlass application defined in their catalog, and you're free to use that if you so desire. We'll go back to the Okta admin console and go to Applications, and then we'll click on Create New App. You can leave the platform set to Web and choose SAML 2.0 and then click Create. We'll give it a clever name like BitGlass. And since I have an icon stored, I'll use Browse and choose the icon. And then you have to click Upload Logo or it isn't captured. Let's click on Next. For the single sign-on URL, we'll enter in HTTPS colon slash slash portal dot us dot bitglass dot net slash SSO slash ACS and then a trailing slash. For the audience URI or SP entity ID we'll enter in https colon slash slash SSO dot us dot bitglass dot net and for the default relay state we'll put in BG underscore portal underscore login. We'll change the name ID format to email address and then click on show advanced settings. We'll set the response to unsigned. And then in the SAML issuer field, we're basically going to take the value that's grayed out here and make sure that it's typed in. So we'll put in HTTP colon slash slash www.octa.com slash dollar sign bracket org dot external and a capital K key and closed parentheses. And we'll scroll down and click on next. 
Choose the option to specify we are an Okta customer adding an internal app. And then let's choose the option to say that this is an internal app we've created and click on finish. Now we can go back to the general tab and scroll down to review all the settings to ensure that it's all populated exactly the way that we want it to be. And that looks great. Within the BitGlass admin console, we'll create an external identity provider object that points to Okta. This requires that we export the metadata and signing certificate from the Okta admin console, which we will then import into BitGlass. And then we'll glue everything together by mapping a BitGlass email domain to Okta. In the BitGlass admin console, you'll notice I have several email domains configured but the one we're most concerned about is rockthecasby.com. Notice if I choose SAML Identity Provider, there's nothing available to select, and that's because we haven't defined any external identity providers. So let's go to Apps, then Objects, and we'll click the green plus button next to External IDP. And we'll give it a catchy name like Okta, and notice that the SAML Entity ID cannot be edited. For IDP type, we'll choose Okta, and then we'll go back to that notepad document where we saved the API key and we'll copy the value and then paste it into the appropriate field in the BitGlass admin console. Now we need to go back and grab the metadata from the Okta admin console so we can go to the sign on tab and click on the identity provider metadata link. And we'll just do a save as and keep the default name. And then we also need the Okta signing certificate. So we'll do that by clicking View Setup Instructions, scroll down, and click on Download Certificate, Save, Save As, and we can simply use the default name. We'll come back over to the BitGlass Admin Console and browse and select the metadata to import that file. Notice that will automatically populate the login URL. Now the log out URL is the same base URL, except we'll append slash login slash sign out and then a closing slash. We'll leave the password change URL blank, but we'll click on browse and then we'll point to the Okta signing certificate we downloaded just a few moments ago and then save to capture all of our work. Let's go back to the people tab and select our rockthecaspi.com email domain. And this time when we choose SAML identity provider, hey, look at that. The Okta IDP is now available. Click on save. One last step. Let's go back to the Okta admin console, go to groups, and then assign the BitGlass Office 365 users group and click on assign. Now, before I demonstrate the login process with Office 365, this is a great time to review the flowchart of the authentication process as it all takes place pretty quickly. I'll use a web browser to connect to Office 365 login page and enter my username. Microsoft will perform a lookup based on the domain name of my user account to determine if they should process authentication internally or if it should be redirected to an external authentication provider. Since I configured this Office 365 tenant to use BitGlass as the external authentication provider, Microsoft will issue an HTTP 302 redirect to my browser, at which point my browser is sent to BitGlass. Based on the domain name, BitGlass makes a decision to leverage the SAML proxy to issue an HTTP 302 redirect to my browser, at which point I'm sent to the Okta login page. I resubmit my username, followed by my Active Directory password, and once successfully authenticated, Okta redirects my browser back to BitGlass. From this point, BitGlass launches the Ajax VM, which executes within the context of my browser and starts the process of URL rewriting for future requests to Office 365 via the BitGlass reverse proxy. So let's slow things down even more. Here's a flow diagram that illustrates the process I just discussed a few moments ago. In step one, I open my browser and connect to the Office 365 login page. I'll submit my username to the form, at which point Microsoft will perform a domain lookup to see if they should handle the authentication or redirect my browser to an external authentication provider. 
Since rockthecaspi.com domain is handled externally, in step two, my browser will be redirected to Bitglass. Based on how we map the rockthecaspi.com email domain to Okta as the external identity provider, Bitglass will redirect my browser to the Okta landing page. In step three, I submit my username and password to Okta and authenticate successfully. And in step four, Okta redirects my browser back to Bitglass. Now, I can configure client certificate inspection, which is useful in determining managed versus unmanaged devices. However, that's outside the scope of this demo. We'll simply move on to step number five. At this point, the Bitglass reverse proxy kicks in and the Ajax VM is handling the rewrite of URLs to maintain the context of Bitglass for real-time data protection. All right, let's walk through the user experience using a service provider initiated workflow. We'll provide our username to Office, at which point we are redirected to Bitglass and then redirected to Okta. Once authenticated, we're redirected back to Bitglass, at which point the Ajax VM rewrite process ensures our browser requests are sent through the Bitglass reverse proxy. www.office.com becomes www-office-com.us.bitglass.net and embedded links are also rewritten to ensure the context of BitGlass in the data path. As we open Outlook Online and OneDrive, we see that outlook.office.com becomes outlook-office-com.us.bitglass.net, and OneDrive, which is effectively part of SharePoint, is dashified as well. Finally, we'll log out of Office 365 gracefully, at which point we can see that BitGlass invokes SAML single logout. All right, let's do a quick recap. We started things off by generating a new API token within Okta. Then we defined BitGlass using the custom application template in Okta. And then we went and mirrored things in BitGlass by adding Okta as an external identity provider in BitGlass. We reviewed the authentication process at a high level and then illustrated the step-by-step -step browser application and service provider interactions with the flowchart. We then logged into Office 365 via BitGlass and Okta to demonstrate the user experience. And lastly, we looked at how to determine the user is accessing Office 365 through the reverse proxy by reviewing the URLs in the address bar. And we also sampled some of the real-time data protection mechanisms that BitGlass brings to the table. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you so much for your time.